when I look back at the, what motivates us underneath, uh, individually and, and collectively. And uh, hope, I think, is, a, a, is an important part, hope. Hope is the, I feel it's like the propeller that gets us out of, of the bed in the morning to, to achieve things. And things can, can improve in the future. And I think hope is absolutely important. Um, if I can think how the world thinks and the, uh, the people who look at their profit and loss, if you have no hope, you might as well shut the shop, close the door, commit suicide, just call it a day, that's the end of the world. But most of the people are not like this. There's hope, there's sunshine, there's a lovely morning like today. You know, it's a, it's a lovely summer day. Anyone thinks it's not a lovely summer day today? Yeah? yeah. Anyone thinks the breakfast was not good? No? Anyone thinks there's no fresh air coming in? Lovely flowers, light, lovely atmosphere. Yeah, good, good men here. I don't think many people set out to be bad men or bad people. So hope is very, very important just to, to go those ingredients of hope and just say, yes, the things can change. After X years of um, neglect and in terms of systems and people and processes, we, we can move out there and, and make an example and just we can be admired and it, whether you stay in this organization or you leave, you can put on your CV, no one can take the, the achievement away. They can fire you, they can do change management as it happens. Anyone knows what change management means sometimes? Change. Change, <laughs> change of what? Well, in some organization, change management means changing the managers. It's very simple. But how do we change people? How do we really look? Most of us, how many of us can change? We're six billion people on the planet going for seven, close to seven probably. Uh, how, you cannot change seven billion people. We have to find other ways of, of improving on, on our performance on that, at that level. So hope is important. And next step, is that enough? Well, hope is one thing, is but how do we have faith things can get better in the future? And I think that is, uh, that is the next step, is standing there in faith that things can improve individually and collectively, the circumstances can be overcome uh, to achieve this. And, uh, and instill faith in people, the cynical people, think, people who think nothing can change. Faith in management that if they, op if they open up the door and the communication and the practices be a little bit more generous, maybe just give a little bit more, whether it's 1% or 3% is a gesture. I'm not saying doubling the paycheck, but I'm saying is be generous in the spirit. Engage more with the people, walk out there, see the difficulties, then things will improve. And that is where it takes a lot of faith to, to mobilize the individuals, get them to believe in themselves, they can make a difference. We're, we're all Mr. Average. And we're all work in progress. And that's the message I'm driving into today. We can all improve, and we're not, we're not perfect. And, and also for, for, for the management. And, uh, and the third thing is, is really um, love. I, I cannot go and say, well, actually, I think you're doing a pretty bad job. And if I were you, I wouldn't be here tomorrow, right? Now, I will be shot down, and it doesn't help any further. It doesn't create any outcome. I really need to look. I feel I need to look after everybody's interests so everybody benefits in a constructive way out of this program of work, of, of the interactions I have. They feel good about what they do, there's a good outcome to the organization, there's good cooperation among the teams, the various locations, business, operation, technologies, external parties, vendors. Sometimes we can be bad, uh, tough with vendors, but that's all right, it's allowed, they're only vendors. <laughs> But it's, this, is, this is really what takes my time. Forget about technology. I haven't said anything about computers. I haven't said anything about time zones. The conference call doesn't work. My mobile has run out of battery. The system is not running and the business is not operating. It comes down to, to people. And that's how I find it at the practical level uh, to, to proceed with the, with the project. And when the difficulty is there, is that enough? No, I stand, I stand, I stand out there. Okay, in faith that there will be a better future and there will be some, some power out there that will change people's minds and hearts and, and get them to, to deliver what we expect 
uh, within the organization, within that program of work. So that was the theory, okay, it, from a practical way. It's called uh, experimental physics for some of you who, who may know the term. It, it comes from experience and it comes also from theory we, we read in our book. And uh, what I like to do is I would like to share four specific examples how this has helped me, this, this method has helped me uh, achieve positive outcomes in my uh, stream of work. The, the first one was um, probably about 15 years ago. I was called to, to integrate a, a, a European part of the bank uh, with my then employer. So we were four of us. It was the head of trading, the head of sales, uh, the, the head of the Benelux country and myself flying from Heathrow to, to go to Brussels uh, to have the first meeting with that organization. And uh, we flew out first thing in the morning. Uh, I parked my car at Heathrow and uh, the trip went very well. But as soon as we had taken off in the morning, folk came down to Heathrow. So there was no way we can get back. All the flights were canceled. It was about six, seven o'clock in the evening, uh, uh, European time. And uh, we went to the airport, there are no flights. Uh, you either have to go get a coach two, three hours and then get a train to Euro Tunnel and that's how you will return. Or there must be some possibilities to go to the city airport. Well, I said, fine, but then I still have to go to Heathrow after that to get my car. And there are no seats. So we, we played that, um, that game for about half an hour. And um, I remember distinctly one of the, of the three men looking at me, saying, well, what do we do in those circumstances? And I don't know how it came to me. I said, it's, it's time for big prayers. And the guy looked at me and said, mm. he didn't say anything. But the way he looked at me, uh, my interpretation was, which planet do you fall from? <laughs> well, that planet, I think, could have been helpful because we were waiting in the lounge and then um, I was hoping there, standing, standing in faith, that circumstances will change. So we asked the, at the lounge, I think it was from an airline, I don't even remember which one it was. One. I said, are there any flights we can check? We said, yeah, yeah, it seems it's clearing up and some flights may be leaving. And your ticket is a flexible one. And if you go one flight of stairs to the next lounge, it's a different airline, they may be able to accommodate you. Now that was probably about seven to eight minutes before the flight. So we go up there and the lady says, yeah, we've just opened in literally minutes. Um, but I can see there's a queue of seven people and I think we only have six seats. Four of us were in the queue. And then I said, well, we, we, have a, we need another little miracle there. So I stood in faith again. And when I was on the plane and I looked back, all the four of us were on the plane. And go back to Heathrow. And by the time we landed, we're not even an hour late from the scheduled arrival. Considering no chances to return that night and nothing else, I think it was a very good outcome. So that's one example I'm going to share. The, the second one, again, for my, for my work environment, was um, three, three years something ago, I was running a major program of work for a, for a bank, uh, a global bank. And it was really changing the, the global settlement system uh, for all the cash products. It's, it's basically 16 countries, probably the largest 50-something branches. That's what operated the bank. And um, we did a pretty good job, and it was uh, a very tough piece of work. The main thing about that organization is they, they didn't really have the, the expertise and the skill set and the maturity, and it was a vendor product to, to get everything, everything working. But what they were smart about is we, we built one team. It's good to, attitude is much more important than technical skills. You can learn the technical skills, but if one doesn't want to cooperate, how do we get them to work with us? So we worked as a team miraculously, and uh, we got the vendor around the, the table also, and it was a very tough experience with, uh, with the vendor because they wouldn't allocate people to, to work with us. But once that was settled, in a, in a tough but I think fair way, we were running migrations to, to migrate from the existing system to, to the new one. And these migrations are really dress rehearsals. 
for, for the actual cutover, which typically starts at midday on, on a Friday and it goes on until Sunday night and then the wall starts again, uh, Japan time or Sydney time, uh, very early in the morning, so by, by the evening of Sunday. And we had three dress rehearsals. The, the first one was not very good. The second one was an improvement. The third one, I think, we just flew through. And the migration went pretty well. I was the last person to leave that site at 3 o'clock in the morning, 3.30 in the morning on a Sunday, with the aim to return there by 9 o'clock or something. And I, I felt it was miraculous because it, was, it went pretty well considering the, the tough lessons we learned in the previous dress rehearsals. Was that good enough? No, it wasn't good enough. By 9, 10 o'clock in the morning, we had uh, torpedoes falling onto the system. And as it turns out, there were about five areas that they were not really brought into my attention. I had done very uh, detailed due diligence. Is there something we have known? Uh, I have, I have um, lifted my heart and I said, we know what we do not know, but what about the things we do not know at all? And, and that was the space which created the surprises and, and the challenges the, that morning. There were five technical areas, one causing s severe speed in the system, one area hogging the system, not being able to work, uh, a piece of software that from a vendor, it was falling out, uh, apart for a few minutes, maybe 20 minutes, half an hour, uh, because it was a new piece of software, uh, but that was, apart from half an hour, it was okay. But the, the net effect of this, it was delaying the payments of that organization for hours or sometimes days. And uh, that re that's where I first found out what it means to be long and short with uh, the Federal Reserve with the, with the clearing system in the U.S. for dollars, because most of the organizations pay in receiving dollars. Now, the organization, the Fed called and they said, you are short of 160 billion. Now that was about six months after Lehman's went bust. And uh, the, the inability of the bank not to pay is interpreted that the bank is illiquid, therefore the end of the world is coming. Be prepared. But then we said, actually, if you look at your books and the accounts, we are long also 200 billion. Long means we have the money in the accounts, short means people expect us to pay them. So overall, it's okay. We just have a, a serious technical issue here we need to address. And we did. 